right, so uh, what are we working on with these shelf samples we have here? Okay, so I uh, glued up a couple of these uh, larger pieces. <clears throat> All right, because you know when we trim shelves before, what do we use? What router? Uh, edge banding. Oh, edge banding, MFK. Okay, so this is basically an edge banding. It's a, for, it's a drop edge on a shelf. Okay? That's thick edge. Right. Okay, so when we look at the MFK 700, <clears throat> look at the front of the, look at the top of the collet here. Okay. Okay, and that's about the largest or the longest carbide you can put in there for a route of it. Gotcha. You are kind of down to about roughly, and I think it says in the owner's manual of this, that you can only do like up to 916s. Okay. Roughly, roughly 14, 15 millimeter. Okay. Okay, so this is a little bit larger. So how do you trim this? Now, I'm gonna set the MFK off to the side, and this is, this is one of those things that's out there. It's an accessory. Now, this is called the edging plate. This is called the angle arm, and this is called a deflector. Now, if we look, it fits on the 1010. Mm -hmm. Someone may disagree with me, says, oh, it works on my 1400. So let me just point it out. We'll do a setup of this. We'll trim. We'll talk about different applications. But <clears throat> if we look here on the OF 1010, it fits here. It's light and weight. Okay. okay. It was designed for the OF 1000 and OF 1010. The, and I'll show you the setup of it. Now, if you look at the 1400 right here, you have the same spot here. This is where your support bracket goes sure. when you're using a guide stop. The angle arm and the edging plate will fit on there. And it's to use each of these routers in a horizontal position to trim this. Oh, okay. Okay. And with the right bit installed, you'll see where you have some great possibilities for it to trim really things so You'll end up looking at it like going, oh man, I could do this, this, and this with it. There's so many applications. One of the great applications is putting a, on like, you know the shaker flat panel door we did? Mm -hmm. Instead of putting hardware on there, which we're going to, you could actually do a finger pull with a core box bit. Tons of applications, but it's to put the OF-1010 and the 1400 in a horizontal position to trim. As I repeat myself, <laughs> The deflector does not fit well on the 1400, so I personally will never recommend this whole system to work on the 1400, and I'll show you how this sets up on here. Okay. In other words, we don't want the chip and the dust to come up in our face, and this, I think, is one of the uh, necessities of this system. That's really cool. Yeah, the deflector could be pretty handy, I figure. Yep, for sure, and it aids in the dust extraction, too. Awesome. So there you go, and we'll go to the setup. So the first thing we're going to do is we have to select the right length of carbide for the width of banding we have on here. So I just select that and I'll have you check that up. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's flip her over. Okay. And let's put this on. Okay. There's some things on this that are very intuitive. And there's some things like, oh, how the heck does that go on? <laughs> <laughs> Don't need to have some wiggle room in here for height adjustment. At the moment, tighten it up pretty good. Bring it okay. all the way out. All the way out? Yeah, okay. all the way out. Okay, so here's the edging plate. Okay, that's threaded right there. See the flat spot? Mm -hmm. That's going to go in here like this. I'm going to open this up. Okay, now watch. See how that's threaded? Mm -hmm. You have to thread it on. Oh, okay. But the flat spot's going to be toward the knob because that's how you lock it in. So I'm going to bring it all the way up, and you'll see the setup on this in a minute. That micro adjust is sweet. Yep. So let's do that. Good. One of the things I like to, to point out is, see this right here? That's the center line of the router. Yep. Okay, so I just want to point this out so you see it. This is the diameter of the bit, if you know the diameter bit, and you want to like do a rabbit slash rebate, you can actually loosen this knob here, bring it down, and you have the micro adjust here to center it right in the, the middle of it. So that That's might cool. that might be a good tip for an application where you're trying to split the diameter of the bit. Okay, so for our application, we're gonna take that wonderful block of yours, <laughs> and what we wanna do is we wanna flush th this piece here to the top of the shelf, okay. or whatever it is, okay? Sure. Um, 
we'll always do a test block because what we're doing is we're working with a round bit. We're going to get it close and do a couple of tests. And there's going to be points where you may not want this perfectly flush. You want to finish it with like a cabinet scraper. Okay, but we'll do some tests with it and I'll show you how to go back and forth. Okay, so I just, I, I made sure that this was, with my eye, that's the apex right there. So I'm just going to take this, I'm going to loosen this. You don't have to loosen it a lot and this is your micro adjust. Okay, now I always do something like this, Big D, look. I always make a mark here. Okay, so I know, like if I go watch. And, and you can actually put your thumb in here and feel it. If I go down in the scale, and this is the micro adjust, and here's a great tip. You'll see, look right here, there's a little bit of wiggle room. That little bit of wiggle room could, could make a disaster. So what I always do when I release this knob, I put pressure down. Oh, okay. And if I go, watch, da um, if I go two, one, zero, what I'm doing is I'm creating shallower. And you can notice it right here as it goes down. See it? Oh yeah. Now if I go in each if I go in the opposite direction, up I ascend one, two, three, four. Each one of those numbers is a tenth of a millimeter. So you this has incredible Ooh. micro adjustment. So I'm gonna bring it down here and I'm just gonna grab my board and right here I know I get a small catch. I'll bring it back up like this. I'll bring it in. That feels level. I'll turn it a little bit just to see. Okay. And we know what we're going to do. We're going to lock it in. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we trim that all at once. Okay. That width, right? So I'll bring it down here and you're going to see, look, I'm not going to be able to. And what happens or what, what you run into is this. Look, it, I'm going to release the plunge and it's going to bottom out. Okay, now that's not good because we would be cutting this, right? Right. And if I bring it in, okay, I still don't have that full width. Or maybe I do, but I'm going to be cutting my edging plate. So here's this release here. This is why the angle arm has that maneuverability. Nice. So let's just, let's just verify. We're going to trim the whole thing just like this. Watch. And we are. Perfect. That's how I like it. Maybe a little on top of here. You can actually dial in it. So you can just trim the board, but I'd like to just make sure I get it. Now, as we look at this, there's another thing that's gonna be happening. We're gonna be using it like this, okay? This is gonna go up against our board right here. Okay, so we, that's how we control our depth, right? Okay, now, as we're gonna be trimming this, we'll do it on the axis, okay? As we're trimming this, guess what? Guess where that dust wants to go? Straight to your face. Straight to my face. So this is where the deflector comes in. Okay. Now, this is why it works on the 1010. You see this right here? Look where it goes. See how it fits the radius? Oh, it's perfect. And I'm going to show you right here, this little cutout aligns with the dust extraction port. Okay. So when we put this on, this knob here is the dimension for the thickness of this base. So when I put it on, I just put it in like this. I slide it like this. You have movement up and down. I bring it over, right? Now, I also, see this center line? That's where I lock it on. I align it with that. I make sure that's pushed all the way on. I tighten it and I'm holding this here and I tighten this knob. That's for different heights. Wow. Follow, and now you have perfect deflection, and that will feed the dust right into the dust bowl. Voltron is now <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to see how I did this one. I was testing it. I was doing like a very shallow uh, rabbit right here. I was testing this before we started this this morning. So what we'll do is uh, we'll see if we're going to cut into the deck before we go to our real material. Okay, sounds good. All right, so, so which way are we going to run this router? Okay, so what what did I tell you? This way. Okay, so this is where your bearing is, right? right. Or uh, template guide or parallel edge guide. And this is where it gets a little weird because now we're not running it upright, we're running it horizontal. Oh. We go the opposite direction when we run a router table. But we can, in our router table, we always put arrows which are where our feed rate is, so it's a little bit easier in my eye. 
But here's where we get confused because a lot of times, like when we're using the MFK, I showed you. You got to remember. So let's do this. I'm going to be testing it. Okay, so this is my bearing. Well, well, let me just flip this up. So let's say I'm doing a profile here. Look, and I'm putting my bearing here, right? I go this way. Okay. Correct? Okay, now this is where it's weird. Because our bearing today is the edging plate. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna have you hold this for the camera. Okay, and I'm gonna take our router. Okay, and there's our edging plate. And look, it goes this way. So this is what I'll do just for the camera. I'll put an arrow which way we're going to take that. Go ahead and put that down. Makes so sense. the way it's gonna work is we're going to be bringing it this way. So I like to start it with the bearing in the full plunge position just because I'm gonna turn it on and lock it on. What I gotta do first is <laughs> It's a manual. I gotta make sure it's an auto because I'm completely plugged in. And I gotta make sure I'm plugged in. Okay. So it is. Look, you see that? Because of the apex of the bit. Okay, I have to go shallower now. Okay. So this is where, remember I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna put my thumb right here and I'm gonna release it. Now I gotta go shallower. So we're going back. So what do I gotta do? I gotta push that plate this way, right? So you could feel it, look. There it goes, and I'm gonna go a few tenths. Let's test it. All right. Okay, so the good thing about this when we go to this board, I'm going to start it for us, okay? okay. <laughs> Is now I know I'm not going to cut into the deck of this. Perfect. And if we need to go ever so slightly lower, we can. Okay? So I'm just going to hang this up for a second. You like that. I, I do. do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's a fine line here, and I want to show this for the camera. You got to learn how to pivot this, but understand there's a, a big, a decent size aperture here, okay? So you don't want to rock it. So I'm going to take it like this. Okay, so obviously I released the plunge a little on there. Just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to bring it in a little bit more. Uh, let's see. I'm going to release the plunge. Bring it in. I think that's where we had it before. And let's bring it in. So always always let it cycle off before removing it now feel that look at that see how we haven't cut into that plywood no and that's very even and you can see how i did a really lousy glue up okay but <laughs> uh, but watch i'm gonna have you get the feel of it you'll start here and just finish it up for me okay, okay? that's about the best route i've ever <laughs> seen Okay, so I want you to come in here, Chris. Come in here so people can see this. See that little bit of glue line? Could we take that down another tenth of a millimeter? Sure. Absolutely. But what I want to do is I want to take a, a cabinet scraper to it. Okay? Hey, I'll use yours. I, I love using <laughs> cabinet scrapers. This, I think this was our first video. Wow. And you can see where you can scrape it. It's perfectly flush until, look, you see I'm starting to break it in there. And you see that glue light there? Watch out. See? Remember what I told you when we were doing edge painting, what the real test was? It wasn't going like this. It was taking your fingernail, right? Feel that. Right. Look how perfectly flush that is. That's super. So that's that's what you use, the edging plate, the flector. You're going to notice there's barely any dust. Most of it's on your shirt. Most of it's on the <laughs> shirt. Cool? Should I come back this way on this bit? We just need to see in that. Woo! Big D! <laughs>
<laughs> Great job trimming that uh, thicker banding on there for the shelf. Um, as everybody can see, that deflector is a must when you're using an edging plate and the angle arm. So great job. By the way, great job with the cabinet scraper as well. That's a perfect fit for that piece. And as we always say at the end of the videos, be positive <laughs> and stay sharp.